A while back, I was searching my bookshelf for Viktor Frankl's Man in Search of Meaning, a philosophical masterpiece from the Holocaust era that has shot up Amazon's bestseller list as a balm for our pandemic world. Frankl's most profound point, that the answer to the question, what is the meaning of life, is to make meaning. I love that book. I needed that book. I know I have that book. My copy is dog-eared from repeated reading, but I couldn't find the book. As I searched high and low, an entirely different book jumped out at me. Its spine read, not quite what I was planning. If there's ever a phrase that captures where we are right now, that's it. I'd wager that there are not many of us who can say, yep, this is exactly where I thought I'd be come Sukkot. Since the first cold moments of the shutdown in early spring, I've been thinking, perhaps an unreasonable amount, about an old movie, Sliding Doors. It imagines one woman's life unfolding in two drastically different ways for the smallest of reasons, if she catches the subway or if she doesn't. The movie splits into two tracks. In one, we see her catch the subway, have a painful moment, which ultimately leads her to becoming her best self. And in another, we see what happens if she misses the subway. She stays stuck. It's a concrete embodiment of the butterfly effect, a popular chaos theory that posits that very small causes can have infinitely large effects. In the context of our own lives today, if the butterfly effect applies, we've got a million butterflies loose. What is the pandemic, after all, if not a massive sliding door. We thought that we were living one story. Along comes COVID, and suddenly we're living another. Throughout the high holiday season, I've been catching up with many of you. How are your kids? I ask. You reply, my son or daughter was supposed to have moved to campus for their first year of college, but instead, he or she is online in the basement. What are you doing to mark the season, I'd asked. Well, we thought we'd be seeing my parents, our children, or our grandchildren by now. But it's just us, again. Well, what does your work life look like now, I ask. We've chucked the five-year plan out the window. I'm just focusing on trying to navigate a five-week plan, or even a five-day plan. This is definitely not what I was planning. I know this in my own family. The shutdown last spring coincided with something we'd been planning for my daughter since probably before she was born, an independent Israel experience. Mike and I had both been shaped and profoundly changed in Israel. Like a cosmic subway shift, my entire life trajectory transferred to a different track by my experience there as a teen. I wouldn't have met and married Mike if not for that. I wouldn't be here today as a rabbi on this bima if not for that. And so we dreamed and planned and wondered what path would be shaped for our daughter? What would she discover about herself? Who would she become? Instead, the spring felt a bit like one of those sci-fi movies where there's a spaceship traveling light years away and they put the crew in stasis. Instead of adventure and discovery in Israel, our daughter was sitting home in front of a screen day after day. And we were the lucky ones. For others, their sliding door moments have been the collapse of a relationship under strain, the loss of a job, illness, or the death of a beloved family member. This is a season of sliding doors. 
our tradition has a hero that embodies important Torah for this moment. We read about him today, Moses. Moses thought he was living one story, but it turns out he had to live another. Our Torah reading this morning begins with Moses sharing with our ancestors the details of the festivals, of the Omer sacrifice that we'll offer when we get to the land of Israel, the promised land. And when God had called to Moses back at the burning bush, the deal was to go to the land. I made a promise to your ancestors, God says, you're my guy. And then, of course, the Torah continues. Along comes Bamidbar, and it turns out that's not the deal. Moses will never set foot in that land. In the context of coronavirus, something I had never seen before flashed into focus. We usually think of Moses' big final speech in the book of Devarim as, here's what you're going to need when you get to the land. Go and make me proud. But that book... Those words are actually Moses' reflection on the sliding doors moment he clearly still has feelings about so many years later. If not for the fear that gripped the Israelites and the decision that they made not to enter the land when they first arrived, everything would have been different. He would have been there 40 years ago. The whole hitting the rock for the second time thing wouldn't have happened. He'd be a young man in a young land. The people that he brought out of Egypt, he would have gotten to bring home. Moses is angry and he's sad. And that could have been the end of the story. But it's not. It's the beginning of a story a story we still tell today. You see, Moses has critical wisdom for us right now. Moses thought he was going to the land. Instead, he got a sliding door. He knows his life has been indelibly shifted off its most foundational course because of events he could not control. And it is exactly then that his most important legacy clicks in. He shapes a story of what can I do now? He names his loss, and then he gets to work, laying out the tools for what it might mean to shape this new reality. Author Bruce Feiler speaks pointedly to the power of shaping our sliding doors into stories in his new book, Life is in the transitions. It was printed before coronavirus became a household word, but it feels like it was written precisely for this moment. In it, he argues that each of us will experience repeatedly over the course of our lives what he calls disruptors, an event or experience that interrupts the daily flow of our lives and shifts the path we thought we were on. The most major of these he calls life quakes. Life quakes are signature events that shape or more accurately reshape our lives, he says, often in ways we can't imagine with an intensity that we can't control. And the thing is, none of us are immune. Feiler discovers that even those in their 20s had been through one or two. No one over 40 had been through fewer than three, and the average is between three and five in a lifetime. Life quakes are his word for those sliding doors that take what we would have done, what we could have done, perhaps should have done, but instead did something else and inexorably shape us, therefore, into someone else instead. He offers himself as an example. As a 43-year-old new father of twins, he was diagnosed with a rare cancer that upended his life. But it also caused him to re-examine not only his own life, but all of life, 
setting on a path that ultimately led him to conclude that the proper response to a setback is a story. What is his story? That he is a collector and teller of stories. And so he goes out and interviews hundreds of people, inviting them to share their stories and teasing out from them universal life lessons that we can each apply to our own. The biggest finding from all of these collection of stories, that life quakes are traumatic. But life quakes, if we use them properly, can be the ingredient we need to force our hand towards renewal and resilience. Which leads us back to Viktor Frankl, who writes, live as if you were living already for the second time. In other words, imagine the sliding doors you would have gone through and those that you missed and use that vision to craft a different story with this one life you actually have now. It's easy to see what has been lost. The idea of entering our own promised land is every bit as compelling for us today as it was for Moses. But the Torah of Sukkot is that our lives are fragile and precious. The promised land is not always on the menu. When inevitably, life is not quite what I expected, we can learn from Moses, from Viktor Frankl, and from Bruce Feiler. In this season of sliding doors, as we weather our life quakes, we are called on to shape a different story. Not what happens to us, but what we make of it. My father and stepmother left back in January to spend a couple of months in Israel. In March, the world shut down, and they realized that they weren't coming home anytime soon. It was definitely not what they were planning. They had signed up for travel, for great restaurants, afternoons exploring their favorite spice shops, for sharing new adventures with old and new friends. They hadn't signed up for lockdown in their small Jerusalem apartment, spending endless 24-hour days between four walls. They hadn't signed up for being alone in a city not their own. They hadn't signed up for being unable to get home an ocean separating them from their grandchildren who they wonder when they will see again. But realizing that they weren't getting what they signed up for, they wrote a different story. They filled their days with every online class they could find, went for late night walks down deserted Jerusalem roads, and started the paperwork for a process they had previously put aside. In August, they made Aliyah, fulfilling a lifelong dream. Today, they're in another lockdown in Jerusalem as the whole country has shut down once again. The life quakes keep coming, but they keep rewriting their story. So, must we. In this season of sliding doors, what will your story be? Shabbat Shalom, Chag Sameach.